Hey everyone, Jibs here from Lore Forged. I want to take a moment to discuss today's episode real quick. We ran into some technical difficulties, and if you've been around Lore Forged for any length of time, you know our standard for audio is pretty high. So to say that this bothers us is an understatement. We do apologize for some of the technical snafus you'll hear in this episode, and we hope you enjoy it regardless. Thanks, take care, have a wonderful week, and most importantly, enjoy the show. Yeah, what is going on, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Loreforged, and we are streaming live over at Loreforged Live on Twitch. Welcome, everybody, you amazing people, you. This is episode 35, and we are your hosts. I am Jibs, and I'm joined by Cash. Yeah, buddy. I thought um, this is a second take. This, oh, and you yeah. are a professional. <laughs> Mute your microphone when you're coughing. <laughs> you do did a that, big glowing that not buttons mute? on that roadcaster. I know it. <laughs> it didn't mute. No, it, did, it it did mute. Um, so so Jibs. Oh. Uh, this was a second take on the show because Jibs on the first take almost died. <laughs> we uh, we thought he was having a medical uh, emergency and we were going to have to uh, from a from thousands of miles away um, talk him through his own medical care. I choked on the spit okay. right at the end of the opener. That was literally the beginning and end of it. I'm glad mm-hmm. you're okay. It would Thank have been you. like, Jibs, bark twice if you're in Milwaukee. Would you like walk me through steps of like self-inflicted CPR? Like, can you do yeah, that? I'll teach you, I'll teach you how to do the uh, the Heine lick maneuver on a uh, on a chair. I like that you uh, used the word inflicted. That just <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, truly encapsulate how yeah. painful it's going to be for you. Yeah. Well, you know, it only makes sense, you know infliction of we probably could have helped you though there's there's one and a half medical professionals in here one and a half (laughs) oh man i feel i feel like that was directed at me (laughs) i feel targeted (laughs) i feel targeted i feel seen (laughs) and sunny raven courts here hi i'm barely here i think most of me was shaken out and distributed across the midwest on the flight that i just took uh it was a uh two and a half hour uh dice tumbler with me inside and uh my wife who's becoming a pretty good flyer but definitely did not start out that way when i met her uh and then h was fine h doesn't care at all he's totally cool with everything sonny may need to take a break to go urinate some blood (laughs) i it, it was rough. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie. Like I've become bad with flying. I was the guy that, that learned how to fly a Cessna when I was in law school. And I remember taking off. So first of all, anyone that's ever been in a small aircraft, like a really, really small aircraft, they are more or less tin with a lawnmower engine on the front. And you're just in this thing. It's like a seat inside a Coke can with a motor. And uh, we were taken off the runway and I'm flying this thing and you get up and we were like 500 feet up and then you bank to go, you know, you bank left or something like that to go into the pattern. Well, I bank left and the door opens. (laughs) So I'm like, I'm like at this angle and the door pops open and I'm just looking down at the runway, like 500 feet over there. And, you know, I look over at the other instructor and she goes, well, shut the door. (laughs) Got it. (laughs) Shut the door. Oh, man. Is there a restroom for me to change (laughs) my boxers? Yep. Yeah. Well, it's it's an experience. I hope hope that your your turbulence was better than my hour of traffic that I've had to uh, that I've had to bear for the last week on my way home every day. I think it might have been. Yeah, I don't know. How are you? How are you dealing with this? This is a totally different life. Cash, who has been a a, a twenty four or forty eight hour guy his whole lo- working life, more or less, is now a nine to fiver, just like that. Yeah, how's poor it going? Me, right, <laughs> poor me. Yeah, so that like that's true. I've worked a shift schedule my entire life, and I've I've had um, the ability to work my commute because I only I live twenty minutes away from work. Uh, but it's 20 minutes away in Southern California. So if you hit it at the wrong times, you are going to sit in a sea of cars. Um, so like my entire career, I've I've had it to where like I leave for work earlier than I normally would so that I skip the traffic. And when I come home, I'm going like the opposite way of traffic. But not anymore. So 
Yeah, my commute home. It doesn't matter when you leave. Like I could leave work like I did today. I left work at three in the afternoon, an hour of traffic. I left home or I left for home yesterday, five o'clock in the afternoon, an hour of traffic. Anytime after 1 p.m. on that same route, an hour of traffic. Ooh. And it's I'm I hate effing traffic so bad. And now I have to get used to it again. <laughs> it's brutal. <laughs> it's brutal. So anyway. Yeesh. Take a nine what to five me? job, they said. It would be it's fun. Nine to they five. said. Kind of. <laughs> it's more like six to four, but I work four tens, so <laughs> It's plus. I, I can't like in my in our Midwestern brain, JB. Do you just not think of like the like Dante had many circles of hell, and one mm-hmm. of those circles has got to be Southern California traffic. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah, yeah. It's real. And like like I was saying, tw- I live twenty minutes. I have twenty miles from work, and it's an hour. Brutal. Yep. Yeah, yeah, nope. Nope. Anyway, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I'll take the turbulence. I'll take, I'll take the- a near death experience in at three thousand feet 30,000 feet above the uh, ground rather than sit in my car and die slowly (laughs) Uh, well welcome again everybody thank you again so much for hanging out with us push and play we have a jam-packed show for you on this show excuse me we have uh, lore lessons a return and the mailbag is back it is open it is full so we're gonna answer some uh content there it's actually like a three question and one question it's kind of fun uh then we have a round table discussion item drops and archetype resources but before we get to that gentlemen we need to celebrate with intrepid studios they just reached this was about an hour ago as of this recording milestone eight has been completed which is great for the team so congratulations to intrepid that's awesome Can you elaborate a little bit on this as to like what really they're talking about generally? Um, no, not, not really. (laughs) Um, As soon as you said that, I could see his face light up because he's Googling. I got it right here. All right. I I can read this. You want to read this quote? (laughs) Cash knows me well. He's like, oh crap. Probably shouldn't have set you up like that. That that one's on me. Could you give me like a 20 second lead in next time? (laughs) Sure. So a milestone is when somebody reaches a goal. All right. Webster's defines milestone as. (laughs) Oh, that's good. Oh, so Steven said, for many people, development updates on Ashes is an opportunity to check in with the project's progress. It can be exciting and a fun experience to sit down and watch a dream take form and come together. Functionally, these touch points offer a way for players to provide constructive feedback and help validate direction. But there is another side to this process that perhaps goes unnoticed. Each milestone, Intrepid comes together and celebrates our or our accomplishments. We reflect on the work we've done towards delivering on our goals. This culminates into a day-long town hall where we review, as a company, our strengths and weaknesses. Introspectively, we carry forward changes we need to make in order to execute better and exemplify the things that worked well. Each town hall opens with a sizzle video of our community and their thoughts on what they saw us deliver. Some may not know it, but intrepid, our live stream day is watching and reading what you all think of our work. That is what motivates us and why I believe Intrepid will succeed. Congrats to the team on a very successful Milestone 8 completion. Onward and forward to Milestone 9. Cash, you want to go first on this? I Just a real quick thing. Uh, something really tickled me in that. And um, that was that was like a heartfelt moment from, from Stephen, I think. Um, when he writes something in there, that was a tweet, right? Yeah. Right, Jibs? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So that was a tweet. Um. For him to write that, uh, you know, in in relation to the milestone that he's watching a dream come true. That's what this game means to him. That's what the people who work for him means to him. It's more than just, you know, just a company making a game. And that's kind of how I that's how I looked at it. Like, that's all I want to say about it. I'm super happy for them. Congratulations, Intrepid on Milestone 8. And yeah, cheers to milestone nine. Um, it just means we're getting we're getting getting closer to the game. But yeah, that little that little tidbit from what he said that that's struck home for me. This is a dream for him, and he's watching it come to fruition. That's pretty freaking cool. It's very cool. Um, it it is very cool. Uh, there, there's a couple of things I I heard in that one is that your reward for grinding out is 
a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> I'm sure it's more fun than that. But the other thing that I heard was uh, that they have a sizzle video based on the reactions of people to the work they're doing, which a makes what? me, yeah, like what? Can you elaborate on this? Are you like pulling stuff from where? You know, are you just taking random comments from the from YouTube? like responses because that seems dangerous but uh, who knows what that could be maybe someday we'll find out what one of these things actually looks like it, they're probably being held pretty close to the vest if nobody's ever really seen or heard one that's kind of cool yeah yeah those are awesome it reminds me of uh what they were talking about it reminds me when we were at the uh twitch headquarters for the elsewhere reveal i think that was 2019 in san fran and when you go in there that's what the employees are watching it's live streamers and it's cycling all day you know it's just like these different streamers and you're like people with it doesn't matter your views you know like it's just it's just cycling through streamers that's what this kind of reminds me of it's neat but um, it's crazy that's don't crazy. don't glance over that we're gonna have to tell a little bit of that damn story twitch is one of the most impressive amazing places i've ever been to in my entire freaking life you want to talk about a company that's doing it right yeah it's twitch so let's talk about their cafeteria jordan uh-huh <laughs> It's uh go on. Okay. Well, <laughs> it's a massive floor that's a giant buffet that has beer on tap and uh massive screens uh that they can watch people stream while they sit and eat their lunch. They've got a whole arcade room that's full of just all kinds of arcade cabinets. And uh yeah. Yeah, it's pretty legit. I'm going to continue. Um, okay. So this wall that he speaks of uh, with these screens. You did, isn't not, do I did not do it justice Jordan. and it wasn't <laughs> good no, enough. So it. he's going to continue. <laughs> this is an entire wall in an entire floor of like a downtown San Francisco. Um, it's an old San Francisco building. that They've completely converted into Twitch. Um, so just picture like an old I mean, it's probably a 30s or 40s building, uh, brick uh, brick veneer on the outside, beautiful, beautiful building. And the inside has been completely renovated for Twitch. So that you picture an entire floor and almost aside, the, the length of an entire wall is nothing but massive screens with all kinds of different Twitch streamers. Not just like uh, Jibs was saying, not just big ones, little Streamers as well are all over this thing, just getting featured. Super cool. They had multiple chefs on staff every day with new menus, almost every day or every week, I think they had. And so you can go through and you can choose what kind. It's a giant food court, but each little spot you go to has their own fresh menu with fresh food that are it's made there with a chef every day. <laughs> I was Holy like, what? Cow. They have kombucha on tap. Not that I'm not really a kombucha guy, but a lot of people are. Kombucha on tap. Beers, draft beers on tap. Now, I would imagine that you're probably limited. Like, you can't get effed up and then go back to work. But um, <laughs> just little touches like this all over the place at Twitch just blew us away. Okay. Side story over. Yeah, it's our last it. month number. We're looking yes. we're in the green. The yeah. numbers. What is this lever? Yeah. <laughs> we're, having a, we're having a meeting with all of our stakeholders in an hour. Right. This is really good IPAs. <laughs> you look expensive. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, that's oh, good goodness. stuff. Uh, wow. That, so, and that was, and so wait, you had the, this was for elsewhere. This is the elsewhere, the ESO reveal. You yeah. had a Twitch? Yeah. Yeah, we were yeah. a part of the live stream reveal for it. That was uh, that was a fun time. Good memories. Wow, good people. Yep. super fun. Good yep. people. Good people. Good people. Good peoples. <laughs> anyway, so to Intrepid, congratulations. Uh, your love and kindness that you give to your community is bar none the most transparent and most genuine that uh, I have, think I've ever felt um, from a from a development team, and most importantly, consistent uh, support. Uh, your social media team crushes it. You're always interacting and always making us and and your the rest of the entire the entirety of the community feel welcome and just um, doesn't matter who you are. You are so engaging and inc incredibly welcoming. It 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 speaks volumes, and uh, I can't wait to see what milestone nine holds because 
is what you continue to do week in and week out is set standards for MMO development and good things are coming. So thank you for everything you guys do. We will be right here. For sure. Uh, one thing I have to, I, 10 seconds before we go on, like 19 people have asked the question, what was milestone eight? Hell if we know. <laughs> you know that's, that's not for us. We just, we really congratulations on it. And looking forward to nine. <laughs> Milestone eight was the completion um, of naval combat and piracy. <laughs> yeah, it's all I'm, there, you guys. Oh, all right. sure. Oh, sure. Congratulations. Let's move on to the lore lesson. Right. And the uh, summoner and the bard, they're done. <laughs> Everything's done. Everything's guys. done. We're Great. launching uh, here in uh, a month and four days. That's right. April. <laughs> I don't know. We don't JB, know. JB, you got things. a lore lesson for us? I do have a lore lesson. And Ooh. yeah. So, gentle man, continuing our lore lesson series before we jump into anything tonight, we'll do lore first and foremost. We are talking this evening about the essence. Now, I'll be honest, I love the essence because anytime I hear it, I think of Harry Potter. And I just, and I, I think that those are. It, 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 the, the whole magic vibe like that's what the essence truly is it's like <laughs> magic <sighs> dial your face back cash <laughs> hey man those are some of the best liter literary <laughs> works of the early 2000s don't be hating you haven't even finished all the movies i don't want to hear your mouth you're nothing more than a bystander on this <laughs> oh my god wow <laughs> can you sideways put your foot in my b-hole any worse than that <laughs> You Ouch. did ask for it, man. I mean, that guy. I did. Okay, I did oh, kind of ask for it. I'm not a Harry Potter fan. I'm just, Sorry. Say, I'm just saying they're some of the best literary works of early 2000s. And the they're movies fantastic. were pretty good. They're fan they were great movies. Great movies, great books. That's awesome. I'm glad that you Looking guys are literary geniuses. I just don't agree that the essence <laughs> resonates with you we're in not, Harry Potter I mean, as my example. It's not For the instance. Odyssey here. Let's not go crazy. Like, no, you go books, ahead. All right? you, you just go ahead and go on with your little lore lesson. Uh, and do I'll you see how shocked he end. acts as though I've broken his soul? It's because I never clap back at him. That's oh what that goodness. was. Anyway, <laughs> the essence, ladies and gentlemen, and to everyone who's here, you find lovely people at Lore Force Live. So the essence is a metaphysical energy or life force, or you could also say chi, that can be manipulated to create what would be viewed as magic in the world of Vera. And what's interesting is long ago, King Atrax was the first ruler of Vera to discover the purpose of the essence, allowing for the manipulation of matter and exploitation of magic for any means, which was a big deal. It was a big deal. And uh, I think we're going to probably hear more about King Atrax. I know that... Um, Steven just dropped a little bit of lore, a little lore tease in the last dev update. And I think we have some more lore coming, so that's going to be a good time. So look for that in the next dev update, probably. But uh, last time we discussed the gods, it was uh, basically the founding of the universe, the founding of how things came to be, the harbingers, all that fun stuff. Well, they're back for round two here in our lore lesson. And in Ashes of Creation, the gods are masters of, of the essence. But what's interesting is that they are separate from it. One didn't create the other, but they exist together in a symbiotic form where the gods have achieved an almost perfect manipulation of the essence and of, quote, lesser beings who exist from, or I'm sorry, who exist further from the essence. Now, when I say further from the essence, what do I mean? Well, as my voice cracks like I'm 12. In Ashes of Creation lore, there are different planes of existence or realms with varying degrees of strength or magic determined by their proximity to the essence. So proximity being the higher up you go in these planes, the closer to the source of the essence you really are. And that's where you can see stronger manifestations of the magical aspects of the essence. So from like highest to lowest, when it comes to these planes of existence, the very highest celestial plane. That's where the gods hang out. It's the plane of the gods. All right. This is where the gods exist. And it's the most connected. Um, it's the most connected to the essence itself. Then you have underneath this, the ethereal plane. Okay. Which we don't know too much about, which is kind of exciting. Cause you're like, hey, what's that mean? Uh, and then underneath that, the third, the third layer there is the material plane. 
Now, what's fun is that's where Vera exists. That's where we will be at when we're in this game. So we're not completely removed from the essence, but we're definitely further on the echelon. And then finally, which also makes an interesting point that King Atrax was the first one to figure it out when there was like no blueprint that we know of, you know, in this in this third realm area. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. And then finally, you have the Void, which is the plane that is furthest from being connected to the essence. Only a minute amount of essence can actually be found in the Void. So pop quiz, Sonny. From the last lore lesson, who was banished to the void? But do 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 the three and and the the things that they created at the beginning that uh, like were the the perfect beings the 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 ancients. There you go. You got it. Did I get it? You got it. It was touch and go for a yeah, minute, buddy. Woo! <laughs> yeah. He doesn't quest. Yeah. He doesn't quest. <laughs> he <laughs> sleeps 10 feet away. I got them both, though. I got them both. Who was dicey there. I'm a little sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> I blacked out for a minute. What happened? <laughs> but I got him. I got him. I got him. Well done. He doesn't well quest. Done, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, oh, let's go. Hey, Zillin's here. Welcome in, brother. Oh, goodness. Uh, Referred to as rivers of essence, the essence itself is so powerful, it flows through the planes connecting one to another. Soul conduits actually help to maintain or even exaggerate this flow, as souls are the conduits for the essence to travel between the different planes of existence. All right, so think of it this way. The essence, if there was like a bunch of like little rivers, you know, I don't know if there's multiples, but at least one that's connecting them all, that's like the essence doing its thing, okay? Then you have the soul conduits who are helping this or, you know, exacerbated or they're helping the flow of it. That's essentially what's going on there. Fun fact. Ooh, nope, there it is. Thank you. <laughs> Glint is a substance that embodies the essence of the beasts of Vera. So when you're picking up Glint, yeah. That reminds me a little bit of, of New World's form of Glint. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which is which is oh, which is oh what? Okay. Oh. Like I'm okay. No, I'm actually <laughs> I'm good with it. Like I enjoyed that that little lore tidbit that New World had yeah. when when you when something died and what was it, what was it called in New World again? Um, um I don't remember. Azoth. What? Our, what's that? Say it again. Azoth. Azoth. Yes, that's right. So that's it. So when something died in in New World, like their Azoth would would basically just like re- would reabsorb into the ground, and um, I kind of liked that thing. So I so if everybody has like this life force in the form of the essence, and that is glint, like that is the the tangible part that remains, there sh- should be value to that. So. You know, I, I've, I've probably I've had my ups and downs with glint dropping from freaking everything um, as opposed to actual loot, which I know we're going to talk about in the show. Um, but I'm I'm pretty I'm excited for that. I think it's kind of cool because it ties right into the law. Yeah. Or yeah. the very essence of everything. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, w- well, the, the fun thing about this is so we have the essence itself, which is, you know, the, the magic, the, the good part. But if you if. If there could be a good side to it, like, that's it, okay? And then you have something that you've heard a lot about, and that is corrupted essence. So corrupted essence, commonly referred to simply as corruption, which we've heard time and time again, is a negative aspect of the essence that was spread by the ancients during the apocalypse. Now, corruption is a... How do I say this? It is a representation of the ancients' magic, or the ancients' hatred. The ancients desire to strike back at the creation of what their gods who banished them to the void have tried to accomplish on Vera. It's like a physical manifestation in a lot of ways, it seems like. And so corruption is this influence of the essence that permeates around locations in the world and tries to pervert what that creation really is. You see that at the Tower of Carfin. You see a lot of that kind of like taking place. So that in short, gentlemen, and the fun thing about this is we don't know any more than this, which this is a very small amount. So I know it's just going to keep growing and keep expanding, but 
this gentleman was more or less an on the essence. I like it. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, I'm kind of fascinated by it because uh, it's it's very interesting to me that you have a an origin story where the gods didn't necessarily create everything, right? Like. If I'm getting this right, you have a bit of a chicken and egg situation with the essence and the gods, right? Yeah. The gods didn't necessarily create the essence. They just became masters of it. So is it really a creation story? You know, like if something's already there, like who created the stuff, mm. right? Yeah. I don't know. That's actually, that's a really good point. It's It's almost like... It is a living being in all living things. Um, do you think maybe that uh, that the essence could be in the in the midichlorians of every being in the universe? Oof. Only a blood test will tell. Only a blood <laughs> test. Only a blood test <laughs> will a tell. Now, now let me blood test. <laughs> let, yeah. So let me continue. Let me continue with this with your with your. St- Stupid Harry Potter theory. Um, what is the what is the uh, the Harry Potter equivalent of magical energy or essence? What is it called? Magic. I think it's just magic. Yeah. Super dumb. Okay. And then <laughs> what is the negative side of that magic? What is that called in Harry Potter? Oh, Mike. Um, <clears throat> I mean. Um, probably like evil darkness. I don't know. I don't know, man. Oh, D- death eaters, death eaters, death <laughs> eaters. <laughs> don't forget the death eaters. It's, it's, it's like a, it, it's like the wind, right? Like it's the wind. You can use the wind for good, or I guess you could use the wind for bad. Like it's just, it's a thing, right? Like mm. it exists out there. So, which is another good point with this, right? Like they've taken the, uh, sorry, I'm sorry. Do you have a further weird point you're trying to get to that you'd like to finish? No, I'm going to try and listen to you talk your way out of this BS here real quick. And then I'll, <laughs> then I'll crush your, your theory. <laughs> Great. Great. <laughs> this is classic interrogation techniques. Just go exactly. ahead and let them, let them talk his way l- into the news. Let them talk. Just let them go. <laughs> it's okay. So the essence is, is functionally like the good side of the force, basically, because they they are manifesting corruption, which seems to be the other side of the coin. Um, and I do like that it's like green wavy stink lines coming off of them. Like it's just like they're just exuding this thing out of their anger. And so they're exuding bad essence. They're exuding corruption. And now it's we're just like stuck with their B.O. on our level of existence. <laughs> we just have all of this, you know, garbage hanging around from the ancients. That's kind of a bummer. But uh, it does make for an interesting world. I love the planes of existence thing. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I I found it interesting that um, the gods were, you know, separate, but they're able to manipulate it. And it to me, it like what it really shows to me is how no one can, contr- no one owns the essence. They just can manipulate it, and it's so can others, and they just happen to be the best. <laughs> That's a great way to put it, because um, the different gods can manipulate it in different ways. And uh, from what we understand, which we don't know very much about the gods, but we do know about the god of creation, um, who we jokingly uh, idolize in some of our videos, <laughs> Stephen, which is kind of funny. I, I kind of think it's kind of funny. No, actually, he's the god of hope. I take that back. But like the god of cre- creation, who's manifests as the phoenix, right? The God of creation is the God who manipulated the essence enough to create conduits through the portals to get the citizens of Vera to Sanctus during the apocalypse. And that is one way that the, that the essence was manipulated. Now, I, I jest with you guys quite a bit um, because everybody can have a different interpretation of what the essence is. Uh, my personal thought, and like, don't get me wrong, Harry Potter's fine. It's fine. It's super cool. Do your thing. But I see it more as the force. And Sonny, you mentioned that. That's why I, I kind of dropped the midichlorians thing, because I see it as a, the essence as, as a living 
being that is um, impermeating everything on Vera, including the people, including the air, including all living forces, the ground. It's just infused in everything. And whether or not somebody can utilize and manipulate it, I mean, it's a difference between like a ranger or a rogue being able to manipulate it as opposed to a mage. The mage has a much deeper understanding and um, ability to utilize the essence because all of their raw power comes from the essence. Otherwise, they would, you know, probably not be a very effective combatant where a ranger or a rogue or, you know, even say a fighter can manipulate small amounts to do, you know, to empower some of their skills. But for the most part, it's it's raw damage that they're that they're using raw physical ability that um, that some of these, you know, melee or some of the range classes are using as opposed to like a mage. But the big part that I see that's different about this is the manipulation of the learning of the manipulation of the essence that was learned by the others and the ancients during their banishment into the void. Now, whether or not they already knew how to negatively influence the essence before that is a, is a mystery. Like we, we don't quite know that yet, but what we do know is when they started placing the harbingers in the sky and they finally came back to Vera to enact their master plan of revenge, they sure as hell had a, a mastery of how to manipulate the essence into evil, which is corruption. So that's why I see that as such a, there's such a nexus that's bridge between the story of good and evil in Star Wars with the light side and the dark side. I, that's kind of how I personally see the essence. And I apologize if that was a long uh, description of what I, of what my thoughts are on it, but tough. It does make a lot more sense though, right? Because like Star Wars had the dark side of the force, which was like a thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, right. it wasn't just the force. It was the dark side. Like you were, you were getting that instead of this, right? Mm -hmm. Two different things. And so this essence and corruption seems to have that sort of, they're both magic, but there is a definite split in what you're getting here. You're not just using one differently. No, you are like pulling out of a different bucket for this. And so that's, uh, it's cool. It's very cool. I like it. Yeah. Thanks for the lore lesson, JB. Oh, yeah. you're welcome. You are welcome. And uh, don't forget, cool. everyone, please, if there's a certain kind of lore that you... We already have a schedule kind of planned out, but we would sure would love to hear what you think. What kind of lore you'd love to hear from us here on the show? We appreciate it. You can always email us, loreforgedhq at gmail.com. All right, so, fellas, the mailbag is open, and this is coming to us from Arched Beetle. He says, quote, Will the hype for AOC lead to disappointment at full launch? To what degree do you think people have created unrealistic expectations? Has Intrepid's transparency helped in this regard, or has it added fuel to the fire? There was a lot to talk about there. Yeah, that's that's a lot. <laughs> that's you. So, Sonny, I'll you, let you take C, B, or mailbag. A. <laughs> <laughs> when you write into the mailbag, if we could have you limit your question to like one thesis at a time, <laughs> it would be great. Um, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna like real quick try to answer all of these here. <laughs> but I have to say, the first thing I thought when I when I saw this was a conversation that I had with uh, Burns about thumbnails and stuff for YouTube videos <laughs> and how we just absolutely refuse to do it. We will not do it. You won't see us do it. But one of the most successful things to do with a thumbnail in YouTube is to write something like, this will fail <laughs> if this happens. <laughs> You put yeah. in big nope. red letters, you say, Ashes of Creation will fail if they do this. And then they don't tell you what it is until it's not doing it. the video. Yeah. And no, we're going to, we will, we will die on this hill. <laughs> yeah. Our YouTube will dwindle to zero before we do a, a fail video like that. Um, and so the question, will hype for Ashes of Creation lead to disappointment at full launch? I mean, not necessarily. It's certainly possible, right? Um, the, 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 the question that you have to ask yourself is this. If you are running a business and you have the choice between hype and no hype, 
what do you want? Right? Like it, it doesn't make any sense to not hype it. You're running a business. You want this thing to be successful. If it's hype and you deliver, guess what you have on your hands? You have Warcraft circa 2004, right? You have a huge deal. If there's hype and it doesn't deliver, then you have new world, which guess what? Sold like a billion copies in the first month. And everyone's like, well, you know, I guess we have enough capital to go ahead and extend this out and like fix some of the things. And then hopefully we can do that. Right. So there's no world in which hype is not the goal going into an MMO launch. It just is. Do I think it will lead to disappointment? It'll lead to extremes of everything. Right. It'll lead to extreme happiness. It'll lead to extreme disappointment. It'll lead to extreme whatever your opinion is on the game. That's how hype works. It's just a magnifier on whatever your opinion is. Um, do I think that people have created unreal, unrealistic expectations? Not for launch. I think they've created unrealistic expectations for alpha. That's my fear is that they think that alpha two is launch. And I don't think that I think that alpha two is alpha two. That's not even a beta people like, it's going to be up and down and they're going to like blow stuff up and they're going to do things. So if you think it's going to be launched, that's when you're, that's when I'm really worried. And then the final question has Intrepid's transparency helped in this regard, or has it added fuel to the fire? It's done both. It's hype, right? This transparent development situation is gnarly. I, I mean, it is just bonkers to me. I've never seen anything like it. And so I feel like we're treading over new ground here and I think that the hype train is real, but like, what else would you want, right? Cash, am I wrong on this? No, no, I think I think you're nailing it when you when you say it. it there will absolutely is going to be hype because hype is is going to be built for for many 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 reasons. Um, and I think the increase in the hype as Alpha Two gets closer is going to be very very apparent. Now, if Alpha Two is successful that hype is going to build exponentially. Now, the question about will the hype lead to disappointment, I think there's a lot of factors that go into that. And I think the thing is, like, first of all, with that, in regards to launch, if Alpha 2 is successful, it's completely going to change the hype for launch. Um, is Intrepid going to deviate from their, from, their, from their actual vision? We have a pretty strong suspicion that they're not. Um, are they under delivering on what they promise? And this is all alpha two, right? If they under delivered on what they promised for alpha two, it's, it's going to hurt the hype a little bit because people are going to start talking crap. Right. Um, I think the biggest one is the gameplay fun. Mm. If the gameplay is fun in alpha two, it's going to build the hype. If the gameplay is uh, static combat like Throne and Liberties was right off the bat. They better go back to the drawing board and fix some shit, right? So there's a lot of, that's just four, four factors that could completely change the hype going, e even just going into Alpha 2. So if the launch is successful and Alpha 2 is successful, the hype is still going to lead to disappointment for some. Because some people are going to realize that Alpha or that uh, Ashes of Creation just isn't for them. So I think the thing to remember here, there's so many factors, you guys. I think the thing to remember here is that MMO players are absolutely ravenous for anything new in the genre. So they're going to try anything and everything. So to some degree, yeah, it's the hype is going to lead to disappointment for some. But if the core gameplay is fun and there's a, a really good solid fun factor, I think the hype for most people is going to increase for sure. Um, like, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think I'm off base on that? I, it's, there's so many dependencies. No, I don't think you're necessarily off base on that. I think when it comes to questions like this, I think that's very dependent upon the person. You know, like this is very singular in my head. So will the hype for Ashes, you know, lead to disappointment well that depends on the person it depends on if they feel as though people create unrealistic expectations if you've been watching the dev updates for probably i would say a good amount of time then you probably know where they're at because you can see where they're at what you see is kind of what you're getting kind of thing and then as far as transparency i mean 
kind of back to Sonny's point, like at the end of the day, in my head, it's a business. If it's, if I'm going to be, you know, handling marketing on this game, I want to hype it up. I want everybody talking about it in their texts, in their discords. I don't care. I mean, my job is to hype it. And so on that note, like I would say shoot for the moon with that stuff. And as far as transparency is concerned, I think in a lot of ways it's helped it as far as from a publicity standpoint. Truthfully, what it's done, I think overall, is it's kept a very stale, a very repetitive and a very, um, what's the right word? (sighs) Predictable cycle or circle of development in a genre fresh. It's, it's because it's, we're seeing new, we're seeing in real time. And then you're seeing those development updates. Like that's such a huge deal, such a huge deal because back in the day, Hey, that wasn't a thing. Not even close. You were lucky if you got one peep a week out of the development team. Lucky. So like this stuff, like this is just, this is just so different from what it used to be that it's almost like the cherry on top every month when you get to see those things. So uh, to in short, this is, I think this is more of a subjective question to each person. Everyone's going to have their own opinion and, and, you know, there's really not a right answer. Uh, but yeah, Cash. I, I want to hit just on a couple of the other points uh, on this one. And one of them is with the unre- unrealistic expectations. And I think for me, I'm, I'm not, really innocent here either with the unrealistic expectation thing and whether or not they i think that intrepid has created that because i may i mean i made a freaking video on why i think ashes is the last hope for mmos and then you know the culmination of that video if you haven't watched it no spoilers but um yeah I, i i think they are the last hope but i think that the uh the things that are in place and what's promised. I hate to say what's promised, but uh, if those things hit and the game ends up just being fun, then it could breathe in new life into the genre. And I, I truly, truly believe that. Um, so, you know, and the fact that I made a video on the side of Intrepid is creating expectations in the first place right there for me and for anybody who really watched the video. But um, based off of what I've seen in the game, based off of what I've seen Intrepid tout and deliver already to us in this transparent uh, development cycle. And this is a pre-launch product. I think all of those things together, I don't think that my expectations or, you know, having made that video is unrealistic at all. Um, For me, I simply just want a fun, functional game. I think a lot of people do. They just want a fun and functional game that has the features that they've talked about and advertised. And if we get that, then I think that that, that they're going to have a lot of wins, but where the rubber is going to meet the road is whether or not you have people that have the patience to wait for those features to be upgraded and improved if they're not hitting on all cylinders when the game launches. Uh, And a lot of games are that way. Games have taken a lot of time to really hit their stride. So this is going to be, I hate to bring the generational thing into it, but I think some of the older folks like us, no, I don't, (laughs) I kind of do it on purpose. Um, I think some of the, some of the older folks like us who have seen development of many games have a tendency to have a little bit more patience for these things. Um, Some of the younger generation, I'm raising one of them, uh, who it's instant satisfaction. And this is the reason right here. This freaking stupid phone (laughs) is the reason for instant satisfaction. So I I really would hate to see a lot of folks who we could bring into the MMO genre with a game like Ashes of Creation be turned off because it's not perfect on week one. I really want to see things hit on all cylinders as soon as they possibly can, but just realize that might not happen week one. Um, I think that transparency is what is going to open our eyes up to a lot of this stuff. And I think, um, you know, this, this new transparent development thing that they're trying, I think is working for a lot of people um, with game development. Um, I also know that Intrepid knows they're not going, they're not going to appease everybody. 
you just cannot do that. It's just impossible. So, so for some people, they're going to expect the game to be perfect. And those are the people that might end up peeling off after a week, uh, two weeks, two months. Um, other people who have experienced that game development, I think are going to have the patience to, and the understanding to just kind of wait around for a little while and just know that the long haul of launching the game products, not perfect. So we're going to refine, we're going to patch that cycle takes time. So, yeah, you know, there's just so many factors that go into answering the question, but great, great questions because they lead to some really good discussion. Yeah. And we could have a whole, you know, we could have a whole show on this. Um, certainly cash could have a whole show on this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Why else am I on this mic? <laughs> Honestly, to both of you with those snarky looks on your faces, you I have me so here much. to I didn't talk. I didn't say a word. Not as a show pony. I didn't say a word. Don't clue me on this. Show pony. Lord. I'm not the show pony. I'm the talker. Uh, you bring up a, a lot of fantastic points. You know what I was thinking of while you were saying uh, that last one was like... When am I going to shut up? No, I was not. The, you're, the, <laughs> you're the voice of the show. That's how it works. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, my son the other day is like, Hey, have you played the latest update on no man's sky? I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no man's sky is still, yeah. still <laughs> updating their game and putting in features. They said they were going to have at launch. It's like, I don't even know how many years this has been. It's this is insane, right? Like no man's sky was the ultimate of having a disastrous launch and it, it's still catching up and yeah. and you guys know better than anyone uh jb and cash that like eso when it came out it was not the mmo that it was when you went back into it just just wasn't but yeah. we do have to move on um we do want to talk a little bit about the round table here and so if anyone if anyone has listened to this show you've heard us talk consistently about the transparency well one of the transparencies of this development team is that they do things like a round table um, which is where they kind of, uh, they have dev discussions. They have things like this where they throw it back at the community. So this is a dev discussion question that came from item drops. And they said, what types of items and upgrades do you expect to drop from regular mobs? Do you feel good when regular mobs have a rare chance to drop a powerful item? So this is a dev discussion. This is them throwing it back at you. So JB, I'm going to start with you here. Do you feel good when regular mobs have a rare chance to drop? And what do you expect from drops? Uh, I think it's this is hard to answer. I, uh, I'll answer by just telling you like what I want to feel as a player. I want to feel that whenever I see somebody who has a weapon that I've only ever heard of dropping, that I've only ever, you know, like one person that may have posted something and they got it from this person and people have tried to farm it, whatever it is, however that works, whatever that's going to look like. And I have a feeling in Nash's, none of that's going to be that simple. That's what I want to see. When you see this person got this from that that one percent drop chance, they got that thing, whatever it is. You know, I want to feel as though things are rare. Whenever it's, um, and then the, as far as the question is concerned, quote drop powerful items. You know, so if if that is going to be in the game, like do you quote, do you feel good when regular mobs have a rare chance to drop powerful items when it's done in moderation and when it still feels impactful and meaningful and that further decision decisions that you make way down the line don't negate that experience or that feeling now. So like I'm going to use an example, World of Warcraft. <laughs> There was one time, now this is not a powerful item, okay? However, it was a tabard that you could only get. And it had, it was white and black with like gnarly looking designs and skulls, like a skull on it. It, something to, it was related to PvP, I believe, way back in the day. I think Burning Crusade, whatever. And it was quite an ordeal to get that tabard. Within the last year, they gave it out for free on Twitch drops. That immediately took away that feeling of, now granted, I'd never earned it. But I just kept picturing for those players. I'm like, these people who worked for this thing. Now people can, everybody on the entirety of planet Earth, if they wanted to, could get this thing. 
So they're they basically negated that that rare chance, right? They made it available. cheapened it exactly. Yeah. So as long yeah. as that never it doesn't occur, you know, where things like that aren't given out and and these achievements are not belittled um, into something that's easy for everyone, I'm fine with it. But just to hold your guns on it, like whenever you make a pick like this, hold to it because. In the in the years down the road, I think that that's truly when those decisions really carry extra weight. Cash, how excited are you to get a rare drop? And and what do you think about this? This is pretty unique for an MMO to to be like, yeah, we're not going to drop things like that. I think um, I think as long as the items are appropriate for the mob, like I love getting rare drops, and I love having regular mobs drop rare things from time to time. Um, so. I think as a normal drop for say like an animal, like if you kill like a wolf or a bear or something, um, things that you can use skin, bone, claws, fur, um, with maybe a chance at like a pristine version of one of these things that's used for higher yeah. level crafting, I think would be cool. Um, I think for humanoids, anything that a humanoid, so like a goblin, a bandit, uh, any other, you know, a, I don't want to kill Minotaurs because they're so effing cool and probably couldn't anyway because they're all six pack and they have strong cores. And they're all they have very uh, strong cores. <laughs> <laughs> so we probably can't really kill them anyway. But um, anything like a humanoid character could pick up on their travels, I think would be very interesting. And this is all aside from Glint. Like, I know that we're going to get Glint. I just don't want Glint to be the only thing. So, yeah. like, if we kill a goblin... I want to loot shiny shit because that's what they're attracted to. Coins, trinkets, maybe recipes for goblin stuff. Um, an occasional weapon, like they probably have a dagger on them that they stole from somebody, right? Um, schematics, uh, things that they might have looted from animals. And then again, with a chance for the rare versions of those items, you know, like maybe one of them was really good and they looted a named dagger. Awesome. I just killed this random goblin and got it. Stuff like that is super cool. I think. I, I agree with you. I think that your idea though has some merit to it. And I hadn't really thought about it because immediately I think like, oh, MMOs are the worst on this, right? You kill the wolf and you get a box shield, right? Doesn't make yeah, any sense. Freaking a halberd out of right. out of a rabbit. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. This sword is a four and a half foot long sword, and it came out of a one and a half foot rabbit. <laughs> exactly. What's happening? Please. Where does the rabbit end and the oh, sword begin? I like Sonny, your a big ass rabbit, dude. Sonny, your comment from another episode was they pulled a like a tower, like a kite shield a out kite of a rabbit. Shield like what was he doing? Fox. Surfing on it? Yeah. <laughs> he said a kite shield from a fox, and I heard it the other day and I was dying. <laughs> but it it raises a good point that what you said was like, okay, but that doesn't have to be the case for everything because if they're humanoid or they're goblin or they're like any anything like that where it's totally plausible this guy has this stuff on him then yeah like that's where you're gonna get that kind of stuff from like looting a minotaur you can basically get anything right um and and then if you want to get like smaller things that are more natural like bones and claws and rare versions of things like that then from the animals that makes sense so you don't have to like completely disband the whole mmo theory of how this stuff works just to you know to adjust it you just have to be a little bit creative with it which is always kind of my opinion on a lot of mmo systems it's like well how creative are you to wrap a story around what's happening. Uh, Ash is a narrator actually in the chat had a, had a really interesting thing. He said, I want a lot of cosmetic drops, appearance slot items, small cosmetic pets from birds, plants, and small mammals. So that's not a terrible concept, right? Like if you kill a bird and you learn the ability to craft something that looks like that bird, like 
I'm not opposed to that, right? Like that makes sense to me. Now, yeah. sure, yeah. it might come by way of a manuscript, but again, creativity. Like instead, maybe you just automatically learn it, right? And and there's your story. Like, oh, I killed this bird and I looked at it for a long time and I learned how to make a bird hat, you know? Right. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> so I just put it on my head. <laughs> a cool bird hat now. Um, yeah, I mean, it, Cash, you're going to say something here? No, I'm just reading chat, and that, that's actually a really good point by Ashes of Neris. It should goblins loot the corpses of players they kill. Could oh, you yeah. imagine? Okay, could you imagine? Be complicated. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but but this this does bring me. It brings me back to um to a game like uh, Albion. Albion Online. Just bear with me here. Albion Online. When you kill a bandit or a mob in the game you have an opportunity or a chance to loot a piece of gear that was made by a player. Like simulating that that player died from this mob and they picked up that piece of gear. How does and the you gear killed, get to the mob? I, th I think it's, it's just the system does it. Um, and the reason being is because every piece of gear in the game is made by players, which is a whole other show, oh, wow. right? Yeah. It's cool, but... My point is uh, that point by ashes and air makes sense. How cool would that be? That a random item from a <laughs> player that he killed is now on the goblin. Now it sounds like a whole lot of mechanics and, you know, uh, back end programming that you'd have to do to make that happen. But how badass would that be that you get an item that was actually on another player? Yeah. I mean, that'd be awesome. Do you ever think of something just in your head and it makes you laugh and then you can't like really get away from it? So I was uh, like a lot of the chat here is just fantastic. Um, and when you were talking about the, 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 the looting in Albion, all I could think of was in Soviet Russia, NPC loot you. And, and I just lost it. Oh, that's good. The entire back half of what you were saying was gone oh. to me. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, should, oh. should we move on to the uh, yeah? To the round take table us there. Question? Take us there. All right, here we go. Combat. We'll start with cash on this one. Combat momentum is an archetype resource made specifically for the fighter. Okay, combat momentum fighter. This resource can give passive benefits or be spent for unique bonuses. Do you like archetype specific resources? Are there versions from other games that you like or dislike? Cash. Um, I'm, I've always been a fan of archetype specific resources. Uh, there's been several classes over the years that I've played that have, uh, had this type of thing, but I think the re the most recent example is the fighter with momentum. I think that was, is awesome. Cause you know, you have the fighters got their health and then their mana, and then this other resource that you get to, you get to, use as either a builder or a spender if you build it all the way up and you're full then maybe you get some bonuses to uh, certain passives or if you decide to spend it then you spend it on some freaking gnarly thing like uh whatever that freaking bloodletting spell <laughs> or well, ability was <laughs> where like ran the was player ran? yeah Ooh. the player like blood leads out like 10 liters of their six liters of blood <laughs> Which bone. I thought was this is freaking bone falling out <laughs> yeah exactly so um I, I i really do like that and i like them when they're archetype or class specific uh, um this like it would have some kind of a light energy pool or a rogue would have some pool um or like a mage i guess that would kind of be mana but you know, maybe it's magic or maybe it's essence. Um, I like that kind of stuff. Or maybe um, maybe a bard is like inspiration, you know, starts playing music. And as he plays music, that inspiration builds and he wants to share that inspiration with his fellow party members through music. I love it. I like I think it. It's JB, cool. What do you think of uh, archetype specific resources? Uh, I'm, I'm fine with it. Like, it, you know, to me, it's just like a class mechanic, right? Like, as long as it makes sense. Cool. You know. Momentum? Cool. Let's do it. Let's run it. You know, uh, a bard inspiration? Sure. Let's run it. I'm game. Whatever. It, I've never really put much thought into something like that. Um, I like this question. Uh, to me, it's 
to me, it was it, like I, I feel pretty uh, neutral on it. Like, okay, cool. Like, it's if it's weird. Like, if I'm like if I'm a warrior and you know, like my 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 thing is mana. You know, and it clearly doesn't make sense for that. Like, you know, then there may be to be like, whoa, why is that? What's that for? Like, that may not make much sense. However, you know, outside of that, yeah, sure, why not? Let's run it. I'm cool with it. I think that makes sense. So, right? If everybody, to a certain extent, can tap into the essence, if every single character, every single archetype could in some way tap into the essence, then they should have a mana pool. You might spend your mana pool if you're a if you're a fighter or a ranger. You might spend that mana pool really, really fast on a skill like, say, there's a healing skill. You know, something that re- that replaces some of your energy and uses freaking all of your mana pool if you happen to use that skill. Whereas a mage who's trained and adept at the, at using mana will use a lot less. You see, you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you could. I think for Good a thought. Yeah, yeah, you could. You could do that. Yeah, I'm not opposed to that. I mean, what you're describing is like maybe a mage gets a giant mana pool, right? Because they're trained at, at pulling it, and a warrior right. gets a small mana pool. But then the warrior would also get, you know, momentum, right? The warrior also gets his own sort of thing that is not mana. Right. So I guess the question is, well, why bother giving them mana at all? And it does beg the question, like, can everybody use the essence? This goes all the way back to the lore lesson, right? Like, uh, we're on this plane of existence where it's not prevalent everywhere like it is in the upper ones. Does everybody have the ability to do this? Or is it more like the force where, you know, you have some people that can kind of use it they just don't have training which is what i think more like the warrior is right if if the warrior would get mana they're basically like a person that's force sensitive that just isn't a jedi right they're gonna be good at whatever they do maybe they race swoop bikes or whatever those goofy little scooters were in uh in the mandalorian <laughs> oh <laughs> god the super gosh, slow ones. like little tyke version of those yeah. Are, you talking, racing, are you like talking about Vespas? the fat Boba Fett series? <laughs> oh, yes. uh, gosh. They're raising a Vespa gang in Star Wars. <laughs> oh, I about lost it. Uh, they're, up, they're the meanest teenage uh, Vespa gang in the galaxy. And, and they're heart. riding the equivalent of tricycle speed <laughs> swoop bikes. Oh, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't take it. Uh, <laughs> but oh anyways, yeah, like that's a, that's a creative system. I don't, I, I think it really begs that question though. Like how much can the average person use the essence? Right. How if if I kill like, like, let's say I'm like a shopkeeper. OK, let's say I'm let's say I'm a farmer on my freehold and I go out into the woods and or or on my farm and I kill a sheep. Like, am I am I going to get glint off this sheep if I'm just like a dude? Right. Does that make sense? Is does everyone basically get a little bit of access to the essence? And I think that that would kind of drive that. Um, well, that's a I much- think it's a. I think it's a difference between somebody being like a mage and being like completely trained in that. And then like a shopkeeper who just, you know, their brother-in-law taught them how to like hold a fart in with, with the essence. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it. The that's all they got. That's, that's uh, super weird. But all right. <laughs> I don't know. To, maybe to cure their IBS. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. I can't believe that we applied for the we're content just, creator program. We're just, <laughs> <laughs> it, it takes some significant skill to hold a fart in sometimes. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, okay, I'm going to dial it back in here. I, I actually had a point here, but I think it's mostly gone. Uh yeah, I don't know. I'll, what the hell? I'll, 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 just, I'll just take it. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. This was Lore Forest. If you enjoyed the show, let us know how we're doing. Uh, yeah, you know what? Maybe just don't on this episode. Just let it, just, <laughs> Maybe give this one a hard pass. <laughs> Do yourself a favor and just... Um, just go go to the previous episode. Let's do that. Anyway, we love you. You guys my, are awesome. My bad. You can always call <laughs> us at 
1776. Good lord. You can always email us loreforgedhq at gmail.com. Sonny! <sighs> Visit loreforge.com to find links to all of our Ashes of Creation content. You can go to YouTube and find all sorts of videos that we've done. Uh, JB has uh, a new video out uh, continuing his series on the lore of the uh, special packages that uh, Intrepid came out, which is super cool. Really, really love that stuff. Um, you might be watching Twitch right now. That is at twitch.tv slash loreforgedhq. I was gone for like five days, but I'll be back and we're gonna do some streaming and have some fun. Uh, and then of course there's Patreon and we just got some new patrons. I was very excited about this. And that is at uh, patreon.com slash loreforgedhq where everybody gets access to everything early as well as the state of the owl, which believe it or not, can actually get more off the rails than this. Cash. <laughs> Sorry, did I, did I derail that? <laughs> Are you okay there? <laughs> okay, cool. Anyway, friends, if uh, join our Discord community if um, if you're into having a little bit of fun. We have some events that are uh, that are getting planned here, and um, we're gonna do more things like uh, movie nights and hell diving and playing shooters and trying to find MMOs to play before Alpha Two comes yeah. out. <laughs> there are none. It's a wasteland. <laughs> well, anyway, we want to um, we want to give a, a good warm welcome to a new member that we've had this week, and that's Jordani. Thank you for coming in, actually hopping into Discord with us one night. That was really cool. Yeah, that was fun. Um, you can follow us on X at Loreforge HQ, or you can follow us on our brand new social media platform, Instagram. Super fun. It's pretty much Sonny posting pictures of his everyday life. <laughs> <laughs> I plan to post a video on how I use the essence to hold in a fart. Yes, we'll all be looking forward to that. <laughs> yes. Good. Oh, you're done? Uh, okay, you're done. All right. I think we're done. I think okay. that's pretty much a wrap. And in a nutshell, th this is where we've this is where we've ended up. After all the years of doing this and all of the deep, meaningful conversations about the content that we produce. This is where we ended up. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Everybody you didn't even red flag me. Disappointed. I couldn't. I couldn't. I dropped the flags. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you so much for listening to the episode. Have a wonderful week in gaming. We love you. Take care. Peace, love, and honeybees. Safe travels, adventures. <laughs>